Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this and welcome to the first instalment of a short series of films about a, an accident that I had on the 24th of September 2017 and uh, we're going through uh, the paperwork involved in dealing with it not only paperwork of course because a lot of stuff these days is done by email really much filling up an external drive with all the comings and goings and uh, of course I was wearing full equipment some of which survived such as a uh, pair of Daytona Roadstar boots which I've reviewed previously and some of which didn't such as an AGV compact helmet um, believe it or not I was wearing this bright yellow helmet when somebody pulled across in front of me to avoid getting complaints from any woke flakes out there, there are going to be some fairly graphic scenes of me being a bit broken, there's going to be various scans, x-rays and bits and pieces of me being a bit broken, and some uh, graphic nudity, my arm and leg with stitches in them. We'll begin with the run-up to the accident, what happened and why it happened, and uh, we'll have a look at the mess I ended up in at the side of the road. So be warned, it's going to get worse from here on in. Zooming in on the map, we can have a bit of a stop in the southwest Northamptonshire area. Uh, toasters here, and it's on this little back road out towards a place called Greens Norton that the Toastarians Rugby Club is. And it was going past there where I had the accident. This is the approach from about a quarter of a mile before the actual accident scene. Um, obviously not the CB500, it's the Himalayan I'm on to uh, show you what, the view from where I was. I could see over the top of the hedges here and knowing that the children's rugby practice is on a Sunday morning, I was taking it easy, it's a 60 limit, I was doing about 50. I could see the roofs of the cars over the hedges and as I made the final right hand corner you can see the white sign for the rugby club and it's about here where the car turned. Of course I began to brake as hard as I could, I'd got a new front tyre on the bike, as you know that makes them a little bit slippery for the first 100 miles, I'd done about 20 on this one and I could feel the handlebars starting to judder as the front wheel was about to lock, the CB500 doesn't have ABS on it. Although scrubbing off speed is everybody's first reaction, you do need to be thinking about getting around the problem, not just slowing down before you hit it. So I swerved across the road trying to get behind the vehicle. There was another one also indicating right, parked right behind it, again waiting to turn into the car park. I then looked at going up the drop kerb and along the footpath which is hardly ever used and if I was lucky I'd stay on the bike because it's not in a very good state of repair but the car by then had blocked that exit. I looked again to go round the back by this time I was still doing about 20 to 30 miles an hour too close to make the turns so the last thought was go into the car park and try and stop before running over a child or into a car that was the last thing I could think of and as I was trying to turn into the car park I could feel the front tyre starting to slide again and I was looking at this fence post thinking this is really going to hurt when I hit this. As I was thinking this the car had crept more into the car park and stopped me from hitting the fence post by me hitting the car. The damage to the car does look quite spectacular. It's a Peugeot 3008 and um, I hit it at about an angle of around 45 degrees, hence the front bumper it looks like it's been pulled off by the impact. You can also see the bullseye pattern on the windscreen. The only party of the accident I don't remember is headbutting the windscreen. I uh, remember the feeling of my leg snapping, which um, hopefully none of you will ever have to feel. I ended up sitting down with my back on the front passenger door and although it looks a bit ghoulish the police had actually asked bystanders to take some photos straight away in case anybody moved anything at the accident scene. What you can see here is me having some form of compost mentis and handing my driver's license to the lady in the long grey cardigan and telling her to give that to the ambulance if I passed out. I didn't know the ambulance had just pulled up at that point. 
I'd also managed to get my phone out of my pocket and make a call to let people know that I wouldn't be leading the ride that day. And as you can see, I've taken my helmet, gloves off and uh, undone my coat. My right arm and leg are broken. Um, I could tell that because it did hurt. I did scream and scream and scream until my uh, natural painkillers kicked in. It was an incredibly painful experience and um, not one that you would ever, ever want to have to go through or in the case of the car driver, put somebody else through. And there I am, sitting on the road, leg obviously broken to me, but not just because of the pain, because of the angle it was at. My arm felt it was in one position when actually it was in another, so I knew my humerus was broken, and uh, it was not the best day I've ever had out on a bike, but at least it was sunny and moderately warm. One more thing that I did while lying on the road was actually wriggle my toes and uh, I was really happy to feel them move. Um, pains anywhere in the body can be uh, due to spinal injuries rather than injuries in that part, although I could obviously see bits of me were broken and the pain did seem to come from those bits. After the ambulance crew had given me some fairly strong painkillers, they told me they weren't going to take me to hospital. Instead they called the air ambulance because they assessed my injuries as uh, being too troublesome to be moved by road. So I had my first and to date only go in a helicopter. Flat on my back, out my face on drugs. In fact, I was so high, I wasn't sure if they put me in the helicopter or, or towed me behind it on my good leg. I do remember a couple of bits of the journey there, but uh, most of it was fairly drug addled. Um, chucked into A&E, assessed, given scans and everything else, and uh, then chucked onto a ward until the following day, where I'd have an operation or two. Anyway, that's for the next part. In the meantime, there's some more cheerful films to have a look at on here, or I'll see you in part two.